Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to learn one of my favourite tunes, Banish Misfortune. This is a three-part tune in D Mixolydian, and it has a ton of opportunities for chords, harmony, ornamentation, and all of the fun stuff. I know I have a lot of younger viewers watching at the moment, really talented musicians, and this is probably going to be my most challenging and complex tutorial so far. But don't worry, I'm also covering all of the very simple melodies and the graduated way that we add in ornamentation and chords. But the final product will sound quite complex and very challenging. And hopefully you'll learn some new techniques and be inspired to practice more. As I said, this is probably my favorite jig. And there's so much scope in this tune to explore chords and the use of ornamentation, both simple triplets, stuttered triplets, and double string triplets. Let's approach the lesson a little bit backwards. I'm gonna play the most flamboyant version of it, and then we'll gradually work our way back to the simple version. If you need notation, printable PDF, scrolling notation, all of that is available, of course, via my Patreon for a very low cost of $10 per month. Okay, don't panic. We're gonna break it all down, starting with the chords and the harmony and the double stops. I'll let you in a little secret. This is my third attempt to record a lesson for this tune. And it's so complex, I get lost in all of the possibilities and all the things that I could teach. And a big thank you to one of my patrons, Kieran, who popped in today for a few tunes. We played through this and I trialed a couple of the more complicated chord sequences on them just to make sure that you could get them, and Kieran nailed them. We're gonna start with one in the very first part. This requires tuning your G up to A. Normal banjo tuning is starting from the highest string, is E, A, D, G. Almost all of the time, I tune my G up to A. So I have E, A, D, A. It gives me open D tuning, and open A tuning, essentially. What it does is it brings the D note and the G string, which would normally be on fret seven, it brings it back to fret five. It brings C sharp, which is a fret six stretch, back to fret four. And it gives you a low A, which drones through tunes that are in D or in the key of A. The tuning part is important for this next section that I'm going to show you. It crops up in the first part of this jig. In a way, I'm trying to approximate the sound of Donegal fiddling, or what I associate with Donegal fiddling at any rate, when they hold a low D note on their G string, and then they play part of the tune that's down low on the D, and you have this double stop sound that goes along and it's very, very evocative. So the piece that I'm talking about is in the first part. We're essentially droning a low D note, and we're using the one that's on the lowest string, which is now an A string, fret five. So 
So the chords are just D and C, and we're passing back and over between the two of them. So here it is, I'm gonna slow it right down. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is to play as much of the melody as possible with the chords, and the other is to use ornamentation to take some of the pressure off the fingering, but still bring out most of the tune. So here's option one. So this is as much of the melody as possible whilst using chords. I'm gonna play it nice and slow. And here's the one using ornaments. So what I'm doing is I'm welding my ring finger to fret five on the lowest string, playing that D note. And then, because some of the notes of the melody involve other fret five, either the G or the high D, I'm gonna use my pinky to catch those notes. So here's that little phrase again, just watch what's happening. The ring finger doesn't move until right near the end of the phrase. But I'm strumming either two strings or three strings all the way through that to create the chord. Now when we do it as a triplet, the same thing applies. That D string stays on. play it through twice at speed. It's a very effective way of creating building crescendo. Crescendo, of course, is building by its nature, but that building up of the volume as we come into the end of the part, which we will then resolve with some very light playing in the second half. I'm gonna show you that now. To create that lyrical sound in the second part, and I've talked about this a little bit lately, I'm going to slide the right hand up away from the bridge. So we're just going to get that sweeter tone. Now in order to do it, you do need to brace ever so lightly with your pinky on the head. I wouldn't stay up there for very long. My, my hand would get quite sore and quite, uh, quite tired, but for a little bit of that lyrical tone. And particularly if you want to do lots of ornaments, I find that having my hand supported properly down near the tailpiece or on the strings behind the bridge, that's where I have proper control so that I can get all of those very crisp triplets. The last big chord sequence part that I want to talk about is the entire third part. And this is where we have done the first part where we've built up that crescendo of chords, played really light-hearted lyrical playing in the second part, and then as a climax, at the end, the third part, we're going to play a lot of big chords. So here's what they sound like.
the tune is going D, A major, D, C, D, C. I'm running out of notes. D. <laughs> right? So the only red herring in there is the A major chord at the start. So there's a little bit of a switcheroo happening uh, with the fingering in the left hand. So very simple uh, version of this is D, A major, D, C, D, G, not G, C, back to D. And then C again, this time the full C chord. And D. C. So the two ways, it's one simple with just the chords and then adding a triplet into each of the chords. The very same fingering, very same chords. Notation and tab might be really, really useful for this, plus the ability on Sound Slice to slow the whole thing down even more so you can see where the finger changes are coming. These are really useful skills as having that flexibility with your left hand positions can add big benefits to all of your tunes. Let's dial it right back. Here we're going to do single note triplets, all done with the right hand. A lot of them will be clean, so we're pressing fully on the left hand. And some will be the dampened or the stuttered triplets. And essentially what that is, and I've covered this before, but it's always worth doing it again, is dampening the first two notes of the triplet and pressing down for the third one. So you get that woody kind of string sound. there's a series of triplets they're moving up through the melody and they're a little bit more challenging I feel for the right hand and it's that sequence Here's a play through the tune. Now this time, just for complete pig iron, we're only going to use slides and hammer-ons and that kind of left hand ornaments. We're going to try as much as possible to leave out triplets on the right hand, just to see what can be achieved in this tune.
One of the nicest things about this tune for me, because it's in D mixolodian, which is like the key of D but with a C natural, is that substituting and sliding up to a bunch of C sharps where the melody is actually C natural, it's quirky and it's a lot of fun. So here's a version of that. Once again, seeing everything notated and slowed down might be very helpful because there's a lot of little things happening there, like some pull-offs and slides and hammer-ons. How do we make it sound like a jig? Don't play it like a robot. All the notes are not the same. They look the same, they're written the same, but we are leaning into the downbeats. da 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 da, -da, -da. And if you even think about the idea of pulsing, and physically do it can help as well, to pulse into the first note of each bar, the first note of each three notes, because it's six eight, so it's one two three, one two three, one two three one, and it's to try to bring that pulsating rhythm internally to you. And I know that it's hard when you're learning a tune, and particularly if you're reading notes, and that sometimes you can get caught up in the individual values. <laughs> That's not what Irish music sounds like. So here's a version to play along with, and it's about that pulse. Going to leave out a lot of the ornamentation and the chords and the more complicated things just to help build on the jig rhythm. which just goes to show that played simply with nice rhythm, it's a beautiful piece of music. All the other stuff are just extra embellishments. Here's a very simple version with just chords, so not the very complicated ones, but a version of the tune that doesn't have a ton of ornamentation happening, but does focus on the chords and the harmony instead.
All right, throw in a sneaky, I'm gonna call it an F. So that with a bit of pace on it, it's just a kind of a, I don't wanna use the word cheeky. a bit too much harmonically for some folks and that's absolutely fine and in actual fact I'm probably over accentuating it by hitting the two chords whereas I would like to do with that is to just kind of slide it subtly down that'd be a little bit nicer so here's the tune and this time we're focusing on left hand run triplets these are courses I've spoken about many times in my other videos, ways to soften the edges of banjo playing. So they're ways that we kind of run around the corners, if that makes any sense. Part, there's a crossed picked repeated motif that you can do again this might be too much and too far away from the tune for some folks but in terms of telling a story with the tune by really varying the treatment of each of the three parts sometimes when we try to make the second part the middle part of the tune a little bit more lyrical this is one way to do it what I'm doing here is a cross pick cross three strings So it hints at the melody. All right, so listen out for the top notes. But by creating that constant blend of the cross pick that's happening, it really smooths out that second part. I'm going to play all three parts now with that in the middle, just so that you can hear the effect that I'm going for. listening out you heard the big F chord toward the end of that with some vibrato that's a good way to know if you've stretched your strings properly when you put them on if they're new strings do a vibrato chord and if they're still in tune then you're in good shape Well, I hope you've enjoyed this back to front lesson for Banish Miss Fortune. Definitely a lot of really complicated and challenging techniques, but also available in this lesson package. 
The simple tune, played really simply with good rhythm, basic ornamentation, and the whole purpose of the way that I teach is to allow you to build slowly through each of the levels until you hit the one that you like, or you can challenge yourself to try something that's outside of your current comfort zone or your current technique level. And that's how we get better, is by pushing ourselves to do things that are a little bit harder. If you did enjoy this lesson, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. It helps the algorithm show these videos to other people who might like the banjo too. Thank you for watching.